Hello again. Today's video is on layering and blending. I spend a fair bit of time talking about how one pencil may blend or layer better than another pencil. With this video, I will show some examples of layering versus blending. I'm going to start with layering yellow, orange, and red from the Prismacolor Premier line of pencils, which happen to be quite good at layering and excellent at blending. For the layering, I'm pressing very gently, otherwise I will end up blending the layers. As I apply each layer, you can clearly see the influence of the base color beneath the color I'm applying. Likewise, when I add another layer of the base color, in this case yellow, it will still affect the layered color. I can continue to add layers to change the tone of the colors or the intensity. For instance, maybe I'm working on a sunset and I want to gradually grade the colors from yellow to deep red. If I only have three pencils to do this, I might want to layer them. For the transition from yellow to orange, I might layer orange on yellow, then add several more layers of yellow to tone down the orange influence. As I transition to full orange, I will reduce the amount of yellow layers and maybe start to add a slight red influence. You may need to experiment a bit with layering and blending as some pencils may not layer as well because they might be too waxy or too chalky. The type of paper you use will also affect how much you can layer and blend. I'm not doing a very good job of layering here as I'm trying to keep things short and I'm not getting my layers down very evenly. For a low quality set of pencils, like the Crazy Air pencils from Walmart, we will see that you can layer them but the intensity of the colors is far from impressive. Because the Crazy Art don't blend that well, I can apply a little more pressure. I actually need to apply more pressure in order to effectively layer them. They do, however, layer. And as I apply the yellow and orange over top the previous layers, you can see layering taking place. I need to work a bit harder at layering down the colors with the Crazy Art, and a side effect of this is I end up being hard on the paper as well. While I was able to layer with gentle pressure using the Prismacolor Premier, I need to use more pressure with the cheaper pencils. This might result in paper damage or flattening of the tooth of the paper, which would limit the ability to layer the pencils. I do notice the yellow layering over the orange and to a lesser degree the additional orange layer. With blending, I want to start out the same way. Start with a base layer of yellow, then layer on an orange and a red on top of that. Prior to doing any blending, I want to be sure there is enough pigment on the paper to result in a fairly even blend. One thing to note, you do need to keep the pencils sharp. The Prismacolor Premiers are a really soft wax-based pencil. I have done a review or a comparison review of the Prismacolor Premiers versus the Prismacolor Artist Grade Scholar Pencils, and I noticed then they were much nicer to work with than the Scholars. But you did have to spend a lot of time sharpening them. As you will see later in the video, I still think the Prismacolor Premiers are great pencils to work with, especially if you are combining them with other sets of colored pencils that do hold a sharp tip. Now when I blend the yellow, you can see that the orange and yellow blends nicely together to form a lighter orange. If I don't have enough pigment of one color or the other, it will blend non-uniformly. When you're going to blend, you have several options to take. You can blend with one of the colors that you've layered with. This will generally, but not always, make that the dominant color in the blend, especially if the color you choose to blend with is darker. You can opt to blend with a colorless blender. I use the Prismacolor Premier colorless blender. Or you can blend with a white colored pencil. Blending with white will often lighten the color depending on what white pencil you're using. If you really want to tone things down, then I would use the Prismacolor Premier white, which I have used here. It will change the red to more of a pinkish color. I'd use a Faber-Castell white if I want to blend things but only slightly lighten them. 
I might also use a Faber-Castell white in an area of detail because it holds a sharp tip better than the Prismacolors. The last thing to note about blending with Prismacolor premieres is that even though I've applied multiple layers and blended or burnished with the colorless blender, the pencils are so soft you can often apply another layer on top. Now for blending the Crazy Art pencils. I've sped this up quite a bit because there isn't really much to see here. Once you get a good solid layer of yellow down, it tends to be hard to layer the orange over this unless you press quite hard. The red layer is a bit better, but mostly it shows up more due to the contrast in colors. When I switch back to yellow and try to blend the yellow and orange, it doesn't blend well. There is some blending going on and it does look blended relative to the layered example above. However, applying so much pressure results in flattening the tooth of the paper, which prevents any more layering. The chalky pencils also tend to not produce intense colors and result in a fair amount of crayon dust and bits being deposited on the paper. Lastly, because they are so chalky, the blending tends to be non-uniform. Where the Prismacolor premieres allowed you to layer colors on top of the blended color, the Crazy Arts can't produce the same result. Any more layering mainly results in crumbling bits of the pencil lead and very little of the pencil adheres to the paper. Using a colorless blender on the Crazy Art layers really has no effect as there isn't much pigment for the blender to work with. I am able to go over the blended section with a Prismacolor white pencil crayon and this does lighten the color up, but trying to blend again with the yellow or red Crazy Art pencils has no effect. In summary, a pencil's ability to layer well is just that, layering one color of pencil crayon over another. The colors can be the same, obviously. The more layers you are able to apply, the better the pencil is going to perform. When layering, you don't want to apply much pressure so the paper doesn't become damaged or the tooth flattened. The number of layers you can get may depend on how hard you push, the paper you use, and the pencils themselves. For blending, you generally want to push hard to blend the colors together. It is expected that you will flatten the tooth when blending. Creamier pencils tend to blend better than hard or chalky pencils. Prismacolor Premier pencils are by far one of the easiest pencils to blend. They blend so well, they often do so while you're trying to layer them. The last thing I will show is an example of how I would layer skin tones for one of my drawings. I'm using the Prismacolor Premier pencil crayons for the drawing. You should see that I really start with very light layers. I will add darker colors for the shaded sections. As I start to become more confident with the colors and the placement of the colors, I will start to layer heavier. Near the end of the example, I will be doing my blending. Even though I blend the colors, I know with Prismacolor premieres, I will still be able to add additional layers when I make final adjustments prior to completing the drawing. I still have a ways to go on the drawing, but hopefully I will have it posted in a few weeks. I'm going to quit talking now. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.